When I was singing, I felt like it wasn't me. So as soon as I would finish singing, I felt like the tray that I left behind the wall came back or I've become back that person. Um, and then, you know, the thoughts of suicide or not feeling good enough or inadequate floods my mind. But when I'm singing, all of that is gone in that moment. So I overbooked myself and in doing that, I was doing damage to my vocal cords where even after singing, I would actually taste blood. I lost my voice um, and it was really painful so I just couldn't sing. I've been singing all my life. I've been in ministry and in church all my life. I've been to every prayer meeting. I've probably heard every sermon, prayed every prayer and I just couldn't get out of my head. The only way that I felt like God encountered me was when I was singing, so now not being able to do that, I felt like I had no worth to him, to the body of Christ, and to myself. And that's how I decided I was going to commit suicide for my 25th birthday. I kept this to myself because First, I think about my parents, my family. I knew if I brought it to them, they would take on the shame of feeling like it's something that they did or they didn't do. It wasn't the case that my parents didn't love me enough or they weren't supportive enough. It was just something that I was battling with. And then when I think about coming to church or speaking with people at church, being in ministry, the pressure is already a lot. I felt like if I spoke about it, People wouldn't be able to receive my ministry the same way based on how I've seen other worship leaders being treat, treated by them speaking their truth and coming out with these things verbally, still battling with it and people almost shaming them, not verbally, but also in action. Every year for my birthday, I would go away. I would go to hotels or anywhere away from my family. My idea was just to take a whole bunch of different pills and swallow it and hope for the best. So I knew that I'd be able to do that in peace. No one would find me, no one would see me. And that's how I decided I was going to commit suicide for my 25th birthday. Good morning, people. Today is the day. Crazy. I don't know how I feel. This year, I had a life-changing surgery, which forced me to step away from everything. I stopped working, I stopped singing, I even stopped going to church because I physically wasn't able to. I wasn't talking to anyone, I wasn't talking to my parents, I blocked my pastor's number, I locked myself in a room for days on end. But me being in my lowest point forced me to reach for help. I finally, gave in to going to therapy and I met with a Christian black male counselor that worked with me at that point and he really just broke down the love of God for me. Receiving love has always been the hardest thing for me. I don't say I love you to my parents, to my siblings. It's just always been a hard thing for me to accept and then I realized because of that I couldn't accept it from God. So going through those three months of therapy he really brought it down to the level of saying despite my gifts despite my talents if i have a voice or not despite me being overweight or skinny he created me in his image and he loves me and jumping into that love of christ is what pulled me out of my depression I would say to someone who feels like this year has been a failure, that it's not over. God turns everything for the good of those that love him. And that's what I've discovered for myself. I've seen it in my family. I've seen it even with my friends around me. I would just say, hold on. I know it's hard. Trust me, I've been there. But even in my darkest moment of this year, I can stand and say all my goals that I've set 
haven't come to pass, standing here and rejoicing in the fact that I'm alive and it's only because of God's grace.